Here's a story from the BBC in a podcast, the BBC World News. When we're talking water and ice and stories, this one's going to go out of this world. It's not to be ignored. Hello, this is the Global News Podcast from the BBC World Service with reports and analysis from across the world. The latest news seven days a week. BBC World Service podcasts are supported by advertising. Still to come. Europa is one of Jupiter's moons. It is an ocean world, so it holds three times more liquid salt water than there is on the planet Earth. It also has all the ingredients you need for life to have taken hold at some point. So instead of asking, is there life on Mars, should we really be saying, is there life on Europa? Now, to outer space. And while the focus recently in terms of space exploration has been on the Perseverance rover on Mars, what might we learn from a mission to the outer planets beyond the asteroid belt? A new book, The Mission, A True Story, tells us about the struggle to get approval for a mission to Europa, one of Jupiter's icy moons. It's also said to be one of the places beyond Earth most likely to have complex life, fish or even sea monsters. David W. Brown is the author of the very human story behind NASA's Europa Clipper mission, which is now scheduled to take off in October 2024. Paul Henley asked him how likely is it there's life on this far away moon. Europa is one of Jupiter's moons. It is an ocean world, so it holds three times more liquid salt water than there is on the planet Earth. It also has all the ingredients you need for life to have taken hold at some point. If, in fact, life took hold at some time in the past, it would have had quite a bit of time, billions of years, in fact, to evolve. So unlike what we're searching for on Mars, which are ancient extinct microbes from three billion years ago, Europa could very well host complex life. I mean, it could be microbes, but it could be fish. And yes, it, it could be sea monsters. In which case they'd be stuck under miles and miles of ice on this moon. That's correct. And that ice is actually one of the vectors by which life could have taken hold and sustained itself. That, that ice through a series of plate tectonics, actually oxidizes that ocean. So it's feeding this ocean one of those necessary ingredients. How do we know all this from such a fantastical distance? Well, in the 1990s, a spacecraft called Galileo circled Jupiter multiple times. And whenever it encountered Europa, it acted sort of like a metal detector at an airport. Jupiter has a massive magnetic field, and that magnetic field was being induced in Jupiter. Short version of all this is just as a metal detector is detecting an induced magnetic wave in the metals in your pocket when you walk through at the airport, uh, Galileo was doing the same thing with Europa. And it found, in fact, there was a subsurface conductor. The only thing that fits is a liquid saltwater ocean. This book of yours ends with the amazing revelation that a mission would actually take place. It hasn't been an easy path to that mission, has it? And it's been an argument that seems to have been won by an interesting collection of, of um, obsessives and misfits. I think your description. <laughs> right, right. It took 20 years for the scientists and engineers behind this mission to convince NASA to actually launch this thing. It's going to launch in 2024. It's going to be an international mission. It's NASA-led, obviously, but it's going to have contributions from uh, the European Space Agency and other space agencies from around the world. The people behind this mission are just as diverse a cast as you're ever going to find. I think of this as a heist story. So just as in, say, Ocean's Eleven, a group of people come together with diverse skills, each with some weird and unique background, and at the end, I don't know, rob a bank or steal money from a casino. At the end of this story, they come together and they manage to uh, steal themselves a spacecraft. Tell us about one or two of the characters. Well, there's Louise Proctor. She was um, a late career scientist. She didn't go back to school until she was an adult. She was an office supply saleswoman for quite a bit of time in, in England. And she decided she wanted to maybe give something, something else in life a shot. So she enrolled at the Open University and found that, hey, I'm pretty good at the science business. She would go on to become one of the most important planetary scientists in the world. There's John Culberson, a, a Texas Tea Party Congress, who um, is certainly not the sort of person that you would picture uh, getting on board with this sort of high stakes, high science adventurism, but would actually become 
uh, enamored with the prospect of finding the second Garden of Eden at the bottom of this, this alien ocean. The author, David W. Brown.